One of the one of the things I also wonder about this renewal that God wants to bring is we live in the age of the image. And in the age of the image, effectiveness looks very different. Let me explain this. Peter Drucker wrote a book a number of years ago called The Effective Executive. And what he, he made the point in that book that if a carpenter makes you a table, essentially that carpenter has to be effective because if he delivers you a table and it's just terrible, it's hacked, it's got three legs instead of four, if it's falling over, you know straight away, this guy's not effective. So people who work with their hands, the landscape gardener who promises you a nicely landscape garden, you come back and it's a pile of dirt, you know within seconds if that person is effective. Manual workers um, can't hide their ineffectiveness. Now, particularly the last 20, 30 years, we've moved to a knowledge-based economy, an image-based economy. So many people now just work with concepts, with images, and it's a lot easier to hide our effectiveness or our ineffectiveness. Um, So much of what companies now do is actually managing public opinion, which is the image of their company. Now, what that means for us is we can hide our ineffectiveness. Instead of pushing into renewal because we are feeling that we're ineffective, Um, we can then see the answer to our ineffectiveness is just more moving around of imagery and manipulating imagery and presenting a better public front to the world. This is what companies do. Um, You can make your life seem more impressive than it really is on Instagram um, with a nice filter and some good shots and editing. Now, this means that we're so used to dealing with everything in the public visible space. So when we talk about renewal, we have to realize that Renewal is going to call into question our imagery. Now, I'm not saying photos are bad. I'm not saying Instagram is bad. All these things or don't do any of them. What I am saying is renewal is something which builds first in the hidden places. Off the public dashboard. You see continually people that God uses in renewal go through a period of preparation. Renewal is based on God's power. And when a leader is used in a renewal, it's not because of their human expertise. Sometimes that's there. But the primary thing is the spiritual authority they bring. The fact that they're a conduit of what the Spirit is doing through them. You think about Jesus. Jesus begins his ministry. He emerges from obscurity. He is a carpenter. He then emerges in his early 30s into baptism this public moment, but then disappears. Where does he go? He goes to the desert where no one was except the angels and the devil. And it's in that place that his obedience is tested. The preparation of learning scripture, he responds to the devil with scripture. And then he emerges from obscurity with authority because the work has been done in the hidden places. Now, we can miss that dynamic today because we live in the age of the image. We can go and project this renewal image to the world. Hey, we're doing it. This is how I'm doing it. Renewals have to begin in the hidden places. A really helpful way to understand this is I call it the hidden bank account. Now, if you imagine there's two areas that you can deposit into. One is public ministry. I can spend hours putting up photos of myself. I can create web pages, blog articles. I can get out there and get people to interview me, do all this stuff. I can get up in front of church. I can talk myself up. All of that is building into the public space, right? A public imagery, my platform to the world. Then there's this hidden space. Who am I when no one's looking? How am I obedient to the things that God has told me to do in private? How do I secretly serve people without them knowing so that I don't get the glory, but God gets the glory? What are the people who God's asked me to give money to and bless them and not tell anyone? What's that moment when I resist temptation, which I could have given into that no one knows? What are those moments that I carve out in prayer on my knees early in the morning or reading scripture late at night that no one sees? That's the hidden deposit bank account. Now, we're so used to something increasingly with a a generation of imagery and the internet and broadcasting, it's almost like that old thing of, you know, if a tree falls in the forest, does it, does it make a sound? Well, almost now we need to say, if something happens and we don't broadcast it, did it really happen? Renewal is the opposite to that. Renewal is going to begin with a bunch of stuff that nobody sees. And I believe that the spirit is looking out 
at this moment. And the spirit doesn't want to have the people with the best, amazing public face. They're like, who are the holy, the hungry, the people who are just so desiring of God to move? They don't want the glory for themselves. They just want God, God's glory. God wants people who are going to partner with him. So his glory is paramount, not their glory. Um, so the renewal work, I think that's going to come, is going to be something which almost is invisible to a lot of the metrics of the world. It's not seen. It's not going to have you know a, 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 a shiny... PR campaign um, so that's going to be new for a lot of people particularly if you if you're younger uh, but begin to deposit in the hidden bank account of holiness of obedience of submission that's the best investment you can make in the next thing that God wants to do